Hello, good evening to you and welcome to News 360. The bulletin comes to you live from the News Hub here at Adessa Wakanda. I'm Natalie Ford. And my name is Parkus Yassari. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, we've got a compilation of local plus international stories. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, Piccadilly Biscuits and My Life Insurance. Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament invites Nigerian High Commissioner over xenophobic statements. Chairman of Chamber of Independent Power Producers, Distributors and Bulk Consumers, Kwame Pianim, recommends non-partisan approach to complete cost recovery tariff. Also ahead in business tonight, President Kufado challenges the banking sector across the continent to deal with cyber threats. And on the international front this evening, UN calls for independent investigation into death of former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi. Stay with us. Details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. Absolutely. You can also watch this bulletin all across the world on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Here's where we start off this evening. The Criminal Investigation Department of the Ghana Police Service has initiated investigations into a video that has gone viral on social media involving a Nigerian English professor. Professor Augustine Nwagbara responded to an invitation from the police on Tuesday, June 18. The professor was arrested and cautioned for an offensive conduct conducive to the breach of peace. A statement signed by the public relations officer at the police CID headquarters, DSP Juliana Obing, said Professor Nagbara was later admitted to a police inquiry bail. The CID therefore uses the opportunity to urge Ghanaians to remain calm and continue to enjoy the relationship between Ghana and Nigeria as it continues with investigations. The professor, who is on sabbatical at the University of Education Winneba, made wild claims that the Ghana Police Service had been infiltrated by Nigerians and hinted of a grand scheme to push a Nigerian agenda. The police are demanding further details and proof from the professor, who has come under a barrage of attacks on social media. All right, so we're going to stay a while longer on the subject. It's a developing story because the University of Ghana has rejected claims by the Nigerian professor Austin Nwagbara that 60% of the incomes of universities in Ghana are generated from foreigners, mainly Nigerians. Well, Professor Austin Nwagbara, in a video gone viral on social media, also alleged that degrees awarded by Ghanaian universities are only up to 20% the quality of those awarded by universities in Nigeria. But the University of Ghana, in a statement in, in says to the claim about the university's sources of income are incorrect and do not in any way reflect the true facts and figures. The University of Ghana described the claims as mischievous and one that is uh, intended to mislead the public and bring the image of the university to disrepute. Uh, university of Ghana statement added that the said professor was a Nigerian professor of English who was a visiting scholar at the English department between August 8 and July 30, 2012, but is currently not a member of faculty. Team. Meanwhile, President of the University of Ghana branch of UTAG, Dr. Harry Akbanu, has slammed the Nigerian lecturer for his derogatory remarks on Ghana's universities. According to Professor Nwagbara, universities in Nigeria provide better quality tuition and degrees as compared to those in Ghana. The Nigerian professor who was on sabbatical leave on the University of Ghana campus in 2011 and 2013 argued that universities in Nigeria provided better tuition while it charged less fees than those in Ghana. If you ask Nigerians to donate 50, 50,000 Naira parents every year to contribute to that university, they will go on riot. But the same Nigerians will come here, 10,000 Naira for something 80% inferior to Nigeria. I have said it, I'm placing it on authority. Cite me anywhere. No Ghanaian degree is 
20% up to the quality of a Nigerian degree, except it's from any of the, you understand me, all our federal universities are better than any university here. The president of the University of Ghana branch of UTAC, Dr. Hari Agbanu, described Professor Mwabra as a frustrated man who needs the services of a psychologist. Because we have international rating agencies that yearly rate universities in Africa, the universities all over the world, hardly do we see any Nigerian public university featuring in those uh, ratings. But we have Ghanaian universities, especially University of Ghana, consistently being rated as one of the best universities on the African continent. He again said universities in Nigeria lack the quality of tuition as compared to those in Ghana. That there's no basis for... I, does he think that Niger, the Nigerian populace, the students who come here, are so stupid to leave their country where they can pay less for quality and come to Ghana to pay more for lower quality? No, they are not stupid. They know what they are looking for. They, they love the environment. They love the consist, uh, consistency. They love the peace in this country where uh, academic year begins and you are sure that you finish. You start your school. You are sure that within the four, three years, you, you finish. But in Nigeria, you can be in one university for 10 years. However, a cross-section the public have proposed his dismissal from the University of Education, where he's reported to be a lecturer. But the UTAC president disagreed. We should not be so petty. Uh, people must be free. He's, he's working in an academic environment. He has every right to air his views. That is what academics are noted for. If your, your views are not accepted, your colleagues will challenge you. And if you are an academic, you review your position. All right, so we're going to stay a while longer on this developing story. Let's hop on the phone lines now and go to Cape uh, to the Winneba. Uh, we're going to speak to the Public Relations Office of the University of Education, Winneba, NS Azutiga. Thanks very much for your time, sir. So I know uh, early on you held a meeting. The managers of the university held a meeting. Are you able to tell us the outcome of this meeting? Hello, Ernest. Uh, thank you for your time. If you can hear me, uh, I know that you had early on held a meeting. Uh, are you able to tell us the outcome of this meeting? Yeah, good evening, faculty. <coughs> and after what we have all been privy to, uh, the comments made by a uh, professor uh, who is on a sabbatical in our university here, we found the comments to be very unsavory and potentially could constitute uh, gross misbehavior to our rules here. And so in accordance with our rules, the committee has been set up for him to be given a hearing and to uh, explain whatever we saw on the video. Um, today he was supposed to have appeared before the committee Unfortunately, uh, he could not appear before the committee. The information we have is that uh, he was being interrogated by the uh, CID. And the committee has been on a standby uh, as and when uh, he was ready, he could come in so the committee could have interaction with him. It looks as if we cannot have him today. And so we look forward to having him possibly tomorrow. Right, that's that's fair. Uh, you said that he's been on sabbatical with the University of Education Winneba for how many years now? Then he's been here, then he's here. And, and what has been his conduct over the years? Well, so far he's conducted himself so well. We haven't had any uh, record of him uh, behaving or doing things that are untoward. This is the first time we have had uh, such an encounter. And so uh, we are going according to the university regulations to look into it. And possibly if there are uh, sanctions that should go against him, definitely it will be preferred against him. Uh, did I hear you say early on uh, in your preamble that uh, after sitting you found his comments uh, as rather unfortunate? Did you say that? Yes, I said so. Uh, which or which particular portions of his commentary do you find unfortunate? Uh, several sections of his uh, comments, from uh, 
talking about the quality of Ghanaian education to becoming a media strategist, uh, creating a situation where Nigerians would dominate Ghana. In fact, there are several aspects of his comment, uh, his comments that we feel are very uncomplimentary. And given what is happening in our own country recently, uh, we feel that he should have been more circumspect in, in giving such comments. And so it will be looked into, and if we find something against him, definitely sanctions will be preferred against him. Uh, well, some would say that the man was just uh, freely expressing his views and opinions, and as an academic institution that uh, believes in freedom of expression, you should be welcoming him. Well, there are nuances to those comments, and he is not making those comments in abeyance. He is making those comments also at a time where we are having uh, security challenges in our country where Nigerians are connected to. And so when he's making such comments, you, you cannot just take those comments out of context and say that he's just expressing his opinion. Uh, it has to be looked at holistically. And so these are the uh, possibilities that we're going to look at and see if indeed there is something. We do not want to preempt what will happen, but we feel that there is some questions that you must answer. And um, if indeed there are certain things that are found against him, uh, we wouldn't hesitate uh, applying the rules to him. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Ernest, who is a public relations officer of the University of Education, Winima, uh, bringing us up to speed with latest development in the school. We're told that the Nigerian professor is yet to meet the committee that's been set up to look into the matter. He would have his time to also uh, you know, explain to them what uh, he meant by exactly what he said, and then they'll take that decision later on. Natalie? Certainly, Pa, but let's still stay on this. As this Nigerian professor at the University of Ghana, Augustine Nagbara, is in further inciting the Nigerian media and community in Ghana to strategize and destroy Ghana's image in a video gone viral on social media. The professor, in a meetup with some Nigerians, implored them to tear up Ghana in the eyes of the international community through negative reportage. Professor Augustine Nwabara admitted Nigeria already had a bad image but insisted it was as a result of how they had been branded by other countries, especially Ghana. He noted it is time to reciprocate that by coming up with innovative ideas and strategies to paint Ghana black in the eyes of the international community. There's online, active online social media, the blogs in Nigeria. Let them come here and run documentaries of the experiences of Nigeria. And blast it all over the world. In three days, Ghana will respond. Let us use our own media and get back to them. Let us see live cases. Let our media with this story say we want to go to their prisons to see Nigerians. Of course, they will turn you back. You broadcast it. Yes. Let's take back our image. Let's take them on step by step in very subtle forms, not frontal, not open. He maintained some police officers in the country known to be Ghanaians are actually Nigerians. I'm a professor of English. From his accent, he's a Ghanaian police, from his accent, I can bet my life he's a Nigerian. I can bet my life. He ha he's a Nigerian policeman, he's a Ghanaian policeman, but he is a Nigerian. His accent is obviously Nigerian. The key things you use to identify where somebody comes, all of them. The professor also said some 10 years ago, the University of Ghana had more Nigerian faculty members than what the country itself has produced. The professor who was on sabbatical at the University of Ghana, Legon, said degrees awarded by Ghanaian universities are only up to 20% the quality of those awarded by universities in Nigeria and expressed disappointment in Nigerians who came to Ghana to acquire degrees. The Nigerian community takes care of more than 65% of Legon's budget, the income of the university. Nigerian students in that university pay a minimum of $10,000, or average of $10,000 per student times the number of students. How much do they generate? All the private universities, everywhere, we have this advantage that we supply to them. What are we getting back in return? Insults. The quality of education you receive here is 80% inferior to what's in Nigeria. I can tell you authoritatively, 
In a related development, the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament is to summon the Nigerian High Commissioner of a press release purporting to portray xenophobic attacks on Nigerians in Ghana. While both the chairman and the ranking member of the committee at a joint news conference served notice to engage the Nigerian authorities on the matter. The Nigerian High Commissioner in Ghana obviously in a statement noted the nature of reportage of criminal activities involving Nigerians in the country smacked of some form of xenophobia. The High Commission in the statement said xenophobic tendencies had the potential to mar the Ghana-Nigeria relations. A united committee, both chairman and ranking member of the committee have taken a keen interest. We have sent a word to uh, the Nigerian High Commissioner uh, to Ghana. We will be meeting him. Uh, we think that there is no cause of worry. But generally, we have to appeal to our own that we don't want to dread any uh, bad relationship between uh, the two countries. And we have no cause to be worried. Uh, we think that crime should be treated as crime. Hopefully this week, we are hoping, we are expecting that this week we'll have an interaction uh, with the High Commissioner. What could be the ripple effect of that, so to speak, undiplomatic statement that was issued by the High Commissioner? You, you still want us to pass judgment on the statement issued by the High Commissioner. We do not want to do that for now. In this era of social media creations and all of that, we are yet to even ascertain if he indeed signed that statement. So let him come and appear before the committee, as the chairman has, has, has indicated, and then we will ask the relevant questions. We will find out if he indeed altered that statement and all of that, and then we shall move matters forward. At this point, we are only urging calm and circumspection. While these concerns border on internal security, law and order, the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament is also enraged about the choice of words from the High Commissioner. I beg to differ uh, from the position being held by the Nigerian High Commissioner in that why do you revisit a um, historical precedent which uh, going by that tangent rather deepen I mean, the, the, the seed of this court? between these two uh, uh, countries. Uh, I think we need to progress, we need to, I mean, move ahead and leave certain things that happened in the past behind. It has its historical antecedents in the happenings around the time in 1969. So we, should, we need to draw useful lessons from uh, uh, what happened at that time and, and, and uh, be guided accordingly. Let's deal with criminals as such. It doesn't matter uh, what their nationalities are. After all, why? Our own people commit crime. There's a greater concern on the judgmental reportage seemingly coming from a section of the Ghanaian media. Well, certainly a lot more on that issue and the commission appears before the committee. We'll keep our eyes on it and bring you more on it subsequently. But let's turn to some other news this evening as the Asokore Mampong municipality in the Ashanti region was at the bottom on the 2018-2019 of the 20, 216 Ghanaian districts on the league table, which rates the MMDCA's performance on the distribution of resources. The municipality scored 0.0% of total scores in the latest reports put together by UNICEF at the Center for Democratic Development. The initiative, which is the fifth edition, is to provide governments with evidence to inform decision-making on service delivery to district assemblies. It is also to provide a multi-sectoral integrated assessment of how Ghana is developing across all 216 districts in the disbursement of resources. Asokori Mampo municipality was bottom on the league table with a 0.0% score, while the Asante Akin North municipality was ranked first, scoring 100%. Greater Accra emerged the region with the best development of its residents, while Eastern region emerged the worst. In the previous uh, indicator, you can have a district that's not doing well, but it will be ranked up because it scores very high in one or two indicators. But those indicators actually don't mean much in terms of well-being. You and I know you, it depends on what weight you want to put on security versus 
uh, open defecation versus uh, health. Uh, okay, but we, instead of us to put qualitative indicators or weight on them, we allow the methodology to weight these indicators as far as they, they contribute to, to the variance in the well-being in the, in the rural district. The United Nations Children Fund UNICEF representative Anne Claire Dufay noted the indicators were critical. Indeed, we find that um, with this tool, the government, parliamentarians, media, civil society have better understanding of disparities, inequities or progress in the various districts so that they can make informed decisions and um, planning and allocate resources and implement policies. The Deputy Local Government Minister Kwisi Boatin Ejei encouraged MMDCAs to take a cue from the league benchmark. Regardless of those challenges that the people have with the indicators, I think that the district league table has come to stay. Our duty is to work towards ensuring that we improve upon the system and for it to be able to serve as a mean, meaningful, measurable index for determining performance on a general basis at, our, at the level of our district assemblies. The Chief Director of the Ministry of Planning, Marian Papa, expressed satisfaction with the report and is hopeful the districts and regions will consider it a healthy relationship to improve standards. The report has recommended a complete assessment of the District Assembly Common Fund to make it more equitable. A reminder, you're still watching News 360 Live from our news hub here at Adesau in Kanda, Accra. You can join us with the views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We are active on social media. Our handle is CB3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. We're also streaming live on Facebook. Now, on our MTN video report today, our citizen journalist Maxwell Amuyebua highlights the deplorable state of a bridge at Adentan in Accra. This is the nature of our bridge here. The bridge has collapsed for about a month now after a very stormy rain. And since that time, nobody has come to our aid. School children cross this bridge every day as the authorities are looking unconcerned. My name is Maxwell, a resident of Adenta, Akatamanson, around Adenta House and Down School of Accountancy. And just like Maxwell, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp on 055-1433044. That's 055-1433044. With us here on News 360, we've got the latest of business news coming up shortly. Welcome back to News 360. Let's delve right into the world of business, starting off with President Akufuado, who has challenged players in the banking sector across Africa to close ranks and find ways of dealing with the threat of cyber attacks. He was speaking at the opening ceremony of the 26th edition of the Swift African Regional Conference in Accra. The 26th edition of the Society Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication SWIFT African Conference brought together financial and banking experts across Africa and the world to look at how Africa's financial industry is evolving. The three-day conference will also assess how the international payment landscape is undergoing significant change as disruptive technologies enter the payment market and put pressure on traditional banking practices. President Ekufado warned stakeholders in the banking sector across the African continent to work together to deal with cyber attacks on digital platforms. The world over, cyber attacks on digital platforms have become sophisticated. And it is important that we close ranks to deal with these new emerging threats, lest we risk the erosion of confidence in our financial payment system. Just as technology offers opportunities to grow our economies and bring progress to our peoples, there are criminal syndicates who will always be bent on exploiting it for their selfish interests. 
they have to be relentlessly fought. The president again charged the conference to find ways of strengthening economies on the continent. This conference should serve as the fulcrum to strengthen the future of the African financial industry. I believe in this room we have a distinguished gathering who share their perspectives on some of the critical issues to spur our continent towards the path of full digitization of her economies. We have a collective duty to work towards improving the lot of our peoples and putting our respective nations onto the path of progress and prosperity. The conference is expected to also look at tools the financial industry is developing to deliver change to customers. Let's turn to the power sector now as chairman of the Chamber of Independent Power Producers, Distributors and Bulk Consumers, Kwame Pienim, has called for a non-partisan approach to secure a complete cost recovery tariff to sustain the power sector. The former chairman of the Public Utility Regulation Council was speaking at the launch of the Chamber of Independent Power Producers, Distributors and Bulk Consumers in Accra. The Chamber of the Independent Power Producers, Distributors and Bulk Consumers, SIBDIP, seeks to represent the power sector in harnessing resources and capabilities of its members and to inform policy. It will also help incubate power generation ideas, foster sustainable energy sector, and bring on board innovations into the country's energy mix. Chairman of SIBDIP and a former chairman of PURC, Kwame Pienim, advocated a complete cost recovery tariff to promote and sustain macroeconomic stability and a reliable power sector to underpin the country's socio-economic transformation. I want a national consensus, a national dialogue, so that it is fixed. It has been damaging us for too long. Whenever the economy is doing well, we come back, a fiscal imbalance, legacy issues, dead from the energy sector. Yes, we need as a nation to confront this. Not, don't make, let us make it political. Let's make it a national consensus issue. The Director of Technical Regulation at the Energy Commission, Dr. Nidako Asante, underscored the need for realistic power tariffs and a balance between generation capacity and supply to cut down cost. By ensuring that we plan to meet our demand on the long term, so not be too optimistic with how much we think we'll need and so provide too much but also when we decide that we need power to not delay in procuring it so that we have shortage unfortunately our power is relatively more expensive than that on the subsector so we have to cut our costs somehow but there's a limit to what you can cut and eventually what is left will have to be paid and it will have to be paid primarily by we the consumers Director for Regulatory Economics at the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, Dr. Simon Siawo Akoli, indicated pricing of power may be cost-reflective, but wondered whether it is being recovered. Look at the structure of our tariffs. It is actually the reverse of what a normal tariff structure is supposed to be all over the world. You see a situation where residential consumers who are supposed to be paying the highest tariff because of the higher cost of serving them, rather paying lower tariffs, whilst industries are paying tariffs which are higher than what residential consumers are paying. What that then means is that there is a substantial cost which are not being recovered from residential consumers. He recommended a balance of the interest of the power producer and the consumer in determining tariffs. Now, Société Générale Bank, in collaboration with National Lottery and CFAO Ghana, has launched the 2019 Deposit and Win promo in Accra. The promotion is intended to inculcate savings culture among customers and offer an opportunity to grow balances while winning attractive prizes. 
63 lucky customers across the nation will be selected as winners and three will walk away with one brand new trendy Suzuki Baleno. Other prizes include smartphones, smart television sets and many more. Managing Director of Suzete General Hakim Muzani said the offer is part of efforts to give customers strong incentives to save their money with SG Ghana and to attract new customers. With this promotion, we want you to win not one but three cars, smartphones and more just by saving your own money and by saving your own money in a real secured bank. I am sure you will agree that this is a great news. I know I cannot wait to see who wins big in the promotion. And I'm sure you are just as excited. The promo is adopted to reward and keep customers while positioning the bank as a preferred destination for doing business. To qualify for the promo, customers must deposit a minimum of 200 CDs, grow the sum to 1,000 and above from now till December 31. We are giving our customers the chance to win three brand new cars, flat screen TVs, the latest smartphones, and much more for a deposit of only 200 CDs. For retail banking, this is very exciting because we come face to face with customers every day, and we know exactly what they want. We know what they want in terms of real rewards for their custom and loyalty and we are happy to respond accordingly. Zete General has been a vital player in global banking for over 150 years with more than 31 million clients based in 67 countries. In a climate of banking instability and collapses, SG Ghana continues to give its customers hope, stability, trustworthy banking services and products as well as a safe place to save and protect their hard-earned money. And that's all the business news you've got for you this evening on News 360. But do visit our website. It's 3news.com for a lot more business news. Park, we'll see over to you for some exciting news. Thank you very much, Natalie, for, for the very latest in business news. Now, there's some good news here because Media General's primetime news anchor and head of the business desk, Alfred Okanse, has been named one of the finalists of the 2019 Mandela Washington Fellowship. Well, Alfred Okanse is expected to spend six weeks in the United States participating in professional development training in leadership in public management. General Alfred Okanse is among 32 Ghanaians selected from over 12,000 applicants who applied for the flagship program of Young African Leaders Initiative. The program aims to nurture a generation of African leaders to push economic growth, improve democratic and strengthen civil society structures that will make the continent a better place. The Mandela Washington Fellowship connects young African leaders in various fields under the age of 35 years to leadership training opportunities at some of America's top universities to expand their leadership skills and knowledge. During a reception in honor of the 32 fellows, U.S. Ambassador to Ghana Stephanie Sanders Sullivan explained the exchange program is not only to provide professional skills and networking opportunities, but also provide a platform to form friendships and bonds. Every year in Ghana and across Africa, thousands of youth apply to be part of this fellowship, undergoing a competitive and rigorous application and interview process. This year's Ghanaian cohort of 32 Mandela Washington Fellows represents the best and brightest of Ghana's young professionals from diverse sectors across the country. Empowering youth is at the heart of the U.S.-Africa partnership. Across the continent, the United States partners with national and local governments, civil society organizations to advance the mutually reinforcing goals of prosperity, long-term stability, and good governance. Alfred Okansi says he looks forward to many learning opportunities during his time in the United States. Uh, for us as media, we're supposed to be creating public awareness, shaping public opinion, attitudes and behaviors, so as to be able to also contribute towards national development. Because 
I mean, we can't keep doing the same things and expect different results. And, and it appears there's a certain malaise of everybody else knowing what has to be done, but wishing away the responsibility of who has to do it. For me, it's an opportunity to go and get a lot more knowledge, add more value, come back, and also share with the team for us all to grow together. Aside his corporate responsibilities, Alfred leads a group of young men and women in the corporate world who spend their weekends volunteering in rehab centers. The 32 Ghanaian finalists will join 650 finalists chosen from 47 other African countries. The 2019 Mandela Washington Fellows will be studying in various universities across the United States for six weeks. They comprise young engineers, a Navy officer, medical doctors, entrepreneurs, community leaders, and civil society activists. The fellows will also have the opportunity to pitch their ideas and meet some top business and public sector leaders at a summit to be held in Washington, D.C. The Mandela Washington Fellowship is fully funded by the United States government. Well, congratulations to Alfred. They're certainly a well-deserved one. It's a great opportunity. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got sports news coming up shortly. All right, so it's now time for some entertainment news with me, Nana Quedrado. Now, starting off with our story, renowned film production company Smarties Production has held a private screening for their yet-to-be-released movie, 40 Looks Good on You. Now, directed by Pascal Amanfo, the much-anticipated movie frowns on keeping up appearances, urging people to master confidence to be themselves in all situations. <laughs> 40 looks good on you is a tale of life and living it the movie tells the story of five besties who met at the university and set out to achieve success at age 40 they made a pact to meet at age 40 to take a stock of life and celebrate their success unfortunately their plan for breakthrough hit a snag as nothing seemed to work for them. So for your mind, that place where you carry me from reach here now, 500. Look, you're supposed to be a But the desire for success still lingers on, with each device in smart means to get rich quick before they turn 40. One resort to sleeping with men just to make money with the four others keeping up appearances. There ought to be something you Come on, something that you're craving for this meal. Think about it. There must be something you're thinking about. Come on. After a long while, the disappointed friend meet for their much anticipated reunion. But deep down within, they are not happy women as they live fake and frustrated lives. What account will the best friends give as they meet again 13 years after school. You have to live your true life and you have to be honest with your friends. At the end of the day, you would, you would suffer from the lies, so it's better you live the truthful life. I'll Catch the fascinating climax of 40 looks good on you and pick a lesson or two as the movie premieres at the Silver Bird Cinema at the Accra Mall and West Hills Mall on June 21, 2019. 40 looks good on you as directed by Pascal Amanfo. And um, with an amount of fakeness in everybody now, you know, you show your good sides, but beneath is where we have the real issues to do it. And the fact that no matter how long you hold on in pretense, at some point, we all have that breaking moment where the truth always comes out. So the movie features stars like Safi Bello, John Dumelo, Uche Jumbo, Stephanie Benson, Rosalind Ngisa, and Selassie Ibrahim. Meanwhile, Uche Jumbo and Shafi Bello have touched down in Ghana. And that's about it for entertainment news brought to you by all the sponsors you saw earlier. My name is Nana Quadrado, and that's how we wrap up the edition of News 360, right? For right, uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Nana. My name is Parvis Yassari. Thanks for watching. I'm Natalie Force. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a pleasant evening.